Hi, welcome to An Evil Mind, a crime fiction vlog from Xenobooks. My name is Nick Malowick. What we want to do with this series is look at uh, crime fiction's history, and it's, it's not only its past, but also its present, possibly its future, because we want to sort out uh, what's become a very complicated uh, literary genre, and we figure one that might be kind of daunting to brand new fans. So we're going to try and uh, tell people what's out there and give them an idea of what they might enjoy. Um, not all crime fiction, for example, uh, is detective stories or noir stories or hard-boiled or, or even really, for that matter, mysteries. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, and also there are a lot of mainstream stories that are not uh, classified as crime fiction, possibly because of uh, prejudice in the critical or uh, academic communities. Yeah, we're not going to indulge in that kind of snobbery. Um, if, if something walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, I'm going to be uh, pretty apt to call it a duck. So we'll look at that, for example. Uh, something like, say, The Killers by Ernest Hemingway, which is straight up a crime story as one could want, uh, but isn't classed as such because of who wrote it. You know, it gets you know grandfathered into mainstream literary fiction, for example. So where does crime fiction start? Um, really, the Bible. Cain and Abel is your first murder story, of course. Now, mind you, you, you've got all the elements there. You've got means, motive, opportunity, and then the actual murder itself. Now, mind you, this one's kind of an open and shut case, uh, given that Detective Jehovah is an eyewitness to it. Uh, but there's also elements of detection, for example, in uh, the King Solomon story. Uh, you know, Solomon's methods of determining the mother of a child are perhaps a little more Hannibal Lecter than uh, Sherlock Holmes, but he gets the job done. And as we go through, you know, antiquity, for example, there's also the Judge D stories from China, uh, a little more modern Shakespeare, of course, Hamlet, Macbeth, those are both crime stories, or at least have strong elements of, of crime in them. Uh, there are other plays, of course, with Shakespeare's that, that do as well. Um, what we're going to concentrate on today is going to be Edgar Allan Poe's, and he introduced a detective in the 1840s named Say Auguste Dupas, and he's probably the first recognizably modern detective character in crime fiction. Now, he first appears in the story The Murders in the Rue Morgue, and as you get into that story, uh, you have about 10 pages of 19th century philosophizing that you got to sit through first. Uh, you know, Dupin, like Holmes, like later characters, has a narrating sidekick. Uh, the person who's actually telling you the story, the detective themselves, is not doing it. That's a development that comes a little bit later. Um, and the 10 pages of philosophizing is not actually 10. But the extended amount of philosophizing uh, lays out how Dupin works. It, it, it ratiocination and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, although there are a couple of different uh, pronunciations that are correct. And the short version is that process allows Dupas to be a really good guesser. Uh, it's also known as abductive reasoning. Um, and you know, this allows him to come in and solve the case of these two mysterious murders in which an old woman has is more or less decapitated with a straight razor and then has her corpse flung out of a upper story window and her daughter uh, is strangled to death and stuffed uh, feet first up a chimney. Now someone figures this has to be, uh, you know, some sort of super strong maniac just came along and did it. And, you know, Dupas uh, is finally involved in the case after an extended period. The, the, the 1840s cops in Paris are not balls of fire. So they are actually investigating this for what we are told is weeks uh, before Dupas comes in. And and he checks things out and comes to the conclusion that it has to be some kind of ape. It turns out it is. It's a spoiler alert for a 100 and uh, at this point 70 odd year old story. It's a giant orangutan. You may have heard this before. You may have seen somebody do a version of this before. It's been ripped off a few and there's probably I think it's been at least two movies, two movie versions of this. Um, the thing of it is, while it is a mystery, there's not actually a crime aspect because the guilty party is 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 incapable of of uh, rationality you know the, the nobody trained the orangutan to kill Dupin finds like a sailor who's the guy who brought it to Paris and from whom it escaped um this guy, this guy did not make himself a killer ape you know the orangutan just gets out it comes in the window the two women frighten it it kills them um so 
you know, this, 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 you see this kind of resolution, we'll talk about this later, in, in Sherlock Holmes stories, too, where there is a mystery, but the mystery does not have an actual crime associated with it. There's a few of those, especially in, in the later years of the Holmes stories. Uh, Dupas' next story is The Mystery of Marie Roget, which is probably the best of the three. It's based on a, an actual case in New York City of the time where a dead woman was found floating in the river. Uh, the most famous Dupas story is probably the purloined letter. And if you've heard that, you've heard that reference uh, in, you know, in relation to the resolution of the story, to the solving of the mystery. And frankly, I don't like the solving of the mystery. I think it's gimmicky. I, I, think, it's, I think it's like a kind of far too clever by half uh, trick ending. So I'm not going to ruin that for you. Go ahead and read it. See what you think. You know, maybe you like it. It uh, every first time I read it years ago when I was a kid, it really kind of uh, fried my butt. It, it, I just, you know, I, I get it, I read it, I understand it, I don't like it. Um, Dupont is historically important. Like I said, he's the first recognizably modern detective, but the character's influence filters down for at least after after the these stories a good 60 70 years um, before you know crime stories start to change but it's a massive influence on authors such as arthur conan doyle who does the sherlock holmes stories dorothy sayers uh, agatha christie ss van dyne rex stout and we'll, we'll talk about all these people later on in, in future editions of the series doyle however is the most direct uh holmes is the most direct descendant uh, after Dupin. And Doyle riffs a couple of times on Dupin's stories. The purloined letter solution, uh, you know, appears in sort of a mutated form in uh, Scandal in Bohemia. Uh, in the very first uh, Sherlock Holmes story, however, uh, Study in Scarlet, Doyle accomplishes in a page, perhaps a page and a half at most, what it takes, you know, I'm, let's be honest, I'm going to say like three pages in the original Poe story. Uh, we, go, we have to go through all this nonsense about how Dupas works, and it's all very involved, and it's very intellectualized. Um, Holmes takes one look at Watson the first time he meets him, and he says, you have been in Afghanistan, I perceive. And after that, he explains how he did the trick. It's not really a trick, it's, it's, but it's you know, Holmes's thing. But it's done, bang, over with. We understand. We are shown by Doyle as opposed to the way we are told by Poe. And they're not operating that far apart. They're operating actually about 40 years apart, um, which is, you know, it's a generation in writing. And, but in certain ways, Doyle's probably a better writer than Poe, uh, probably ultimately casts a longer shadow in a lot of ways. And, you know, these may be controversial opinions, and so be it. it. It's certainly how I feel about it. Um, you know, Poe certainly exerts a greater influence in uh, horror fiction or supernatural fiction than he does in, in straight crime stories, but um, still very significant in crime. So this is the kind of thing we're going to talk about in future editions. I'm going to wrap this up a little bit. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, uh, hope you learned something. If there's any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, we'll respond to that. And we hope to see you again here before. Uh, we hope to see you again, period, uh, before we do the next one. And um, we'll just move on from there. And thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And please follow the links and like the channel. And we'll talk to you later.